I had a subscriber email me and the subject was about something I was actually thinking about making a video of. And that email confirmed I should make this video. So thank you for that. This subscriber was asking for advice on the Trek Marlin series and mentioned how Trek's plethora of options makes it very overwhelming to decide which bike to choose. Choosing a mountain bike these days can be a job in itself and one of the biggest hurdles I've encountered and I'm sure a lot of you have as well is trying to choose between so many different makes and models. I remember as a kid if we wanted a new bike our bike shop was the local Walmart. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. At Walmart the bike selection was very limited which made it incredibly easy to decide which bike you wanted. But even at Walmart, that's not the case anymore. I thought only the bike enthusiasts who shop at actual bike shops had to deal with this issue. But now, even the casual rider looking to pick up an ordinary bike to ride around has to choose through numerous options. If choosing what style of mountain bike, such as a full suspension or hardtail wasn't difficult enough, nowadays you even have to decide what wheel size you want. Answer this down in the comments. Will big box stores like Walmart start to truly compete with its low prices? This is the first time I've seen a gravel bike in Walmart, and for $250, I'd be willing to try it. Now let's talk about Trek. I ride a Trek Roscoe 9 as my main trail bike, and this subscriber mentioned how overwhelming it is to choose between all the different Trek bikes, and I can totally agree. I'm assuming this subscriber is in the beginning stages of mountain biking, considering they are asking about the Trek Marlins, and as a beginner, when you're presented with so many options, it can be very difficult to decide which bike to choose, especially if you don't have a friend or someone at your local bike shop who's willing to help you. The Trek Marlin series will always have a place in my heart because it was my first ever mountain bike. But now that I know a little bit more about mountain bikes, if I'm being honest, at this point, I think the Trek Marlin should be phased out, specifically the seven and the eight. And let me tell you why. If you look here, the Trek Marlin 7 is $7.99 and the Trek Marlin 8 is $9.99 and these are only Gen 2s. Knowing what I know about mountain bikes now, are you kidding me? The Trek Marlins are awesome bikes, don't get me wrong, but with so many different options, these bikes really don't make sense anymore and honestly, they just confuse people. For example, here's the all new Trek Marlin 8 Gen 3. This bike actually looks really sick. And at first glance, this bike looks like it's ready for a person who wants to take trail riding serious. But there's a few major issues with this bike. And the first and biggest issue with this bike is the price. This bike is advertised as a trail riding bike and at $12.99, you don't get many trail bike features. This is where having so many options can be confusing. Like all the lower model Marlins, this one still has a quick release front hub. And at $12.99, this bike still doesn't have a tapered head tube. It also still lacks a rear through axle. Even the Walmart mountain bikes have a tapered head tube for a quarter of the price, which allows you to easily upgrade the fork. So if you're looking for a real trail bike and want to stay in the Trek brand of bikes, finally, there's a better option. As I was walking through the Trek store, I saw a new bike that I haven't seen in person yet. And just a year ago, I would have told you not to ever consider buying this bike. But this year, I definitely think you should consider it over any Marlin. And that bike is the brand new Trek Roscoe 6.
this is actually the bike that I think needs to replace the Trek Marlin 7 and the Trek Marlin 8. It has more trail bike geometry with all the standards of modern mountain bikes. And it's also cheaper than the Trek Marlin 8. There's one thing to note about the Trek Roscoe 6. It's only a 1x9 drivetrain, but a guy at Trek told me it's very easy to convert the Shimano Q's to a 1x10 or even a 1x11 drivetrain. So if you're looking for an inexpensive entry level bike option with Trek that's more than a commuter and you plan to hit the trails here and there, I think the Trek Roscoe 6 is a much better option, but if you're content with the Trek Marlin and just like the way that it rides better, then I would say go with the Trek Marlin because they are great bikes for their intended purpose. And if you don't plan to do any major upgrades, then you're good to go. Like I always say, the goal is just to have fun, but when you're met with so many options and the difference between the bikes are extremely minimal, but the prices are in the hundreds of dollars, it's just hard to have an enjoyable experience without second guessing yourself later. So to anyone trying to choose between the Trek Marlin 7 or the 8, whether it be the Gen 2 or Gen 3 version, when trying to decide which bike you want, if you think there's any chance of you hitting the trails, I would say at the bare minimum, go with the Trek Roscoe 6. That way you won't be near as limited to the things you can do to your bike in the future versus the Trek Marlins. Nice. Man, I love this trail when it comes to riding this bike. It's like the perfect trail for a hardtail. For any bike in general, but a hardtail specifically because you can go so fast and still have so much fun with the chunk without it being too chunky. 